We begin tonight with advice for helping newborns get off to a great start in life. Joining us for this week's Your Health segment are Jennifer Fahey, Assistant Professor at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and Certified Nurse Midwife at the University of Maryland Medical Center, and Cheryl Holden, Senior Nurse, uh, Clinical Nurse and Lactation Consultant, University of Maryland Medical Center. Thanks to both of you for being here. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Beth. So when it comes to breastfeeding rates around the world, if you look at the developed countries, United States lags but it's getting better. Is that what you're seeing in your practice? Yes, we're working very hard to initiate higher breastfeeding uh, numbers with the moms. And that's starting by getting babies skin to skin as soon as they're delivered. So we have, we have 10 steps that we're following because we're working for baby friendly. Um, but every hospital in Maryland is all pursuing the same thing, more exclusive breastfeeding babies. What do you see in terms of the receptiveness of new parents to that? I think it's definitely improving as word gets out about initiatives such as this, mm -hmm. as we learn more and more about the health benefits uh, of breastfeeding. I keep learning new things and I've been doing this for quite a while and it's amazing. Uh, breast milk, if it were a medicine, we'd be required to give it to all newborns. So we just need to get the message out that this is something that moms can give to their babies. And it's more than food. Oh yes, much more than food. Tell me more. It's an active substance. Um, the reason I call it a medicine is because it gives antibodies that help baby, that particular baby at that particular age in its life. It's perfectly made to give it what it needs nutritionally, what needs to fight infections, what it needs to learn about it's culture even. We get tastes from the breast milk that help us learn to be in our community. It's really an amazing substance. It, for the mom, for, the, for the, the new moms that you work with, is it, is it more work uh, to, to breastfeed or, or, or get formula? That's a great question. And how, how do they perceive it? They don't have to get up in the middle of the night to warm up a bottle uh, if they're breastfeeding. They don't have to prepare bottles of formula. Um, and it's definitely good for the environment, not throwing formula cans away, I think that kind of thing. There's, a, there's this idea that sometimes parents have that they're gonna have to work more if they breastfeed because it's something that the mom's doing. But as it turns out, on average, um, a new study found that Breastfeeding moms sleep 45 minutes longer than moms who are formula feeding. Well, that's important. Yeah, so sleep is extremely important. I think the really difficult time for moms comes when they're trying to return to the workforce or reintegrate into the other aspects of society. And that's where it's really important for the rest of the community to come in and help them. Because it can be very difficult to return to work and pump and do all the work of continuing to provide this wonderful uh, food source to their babies when we're back as working moms, for example. I experienced that myself, the challenges. And so uh, I think that's where the challenge of the work comes in and where everyone can help new moms. In terms of, of um, right off the bat, uh, within the first day or two, is there some degree of difficulty? I mean, maybe it, maybe it works naturally, immediately, the baby knows what it's doing for the most part, but but the mom may need a little help. It's a learned behavior, right? Like any other learned behavior. It is for, for both of them. And mm -hmm. I think by getting babies on mother's chest mm -hmm. as soon as possible after delivery and then allowing them to find their food source and to eat with the support of all the staff it's working out very well. How soon after delivery do you try to do that? Um, right away if we can. Uh, within minutes of being born. We're drying the baby off and putting the baby on mom's chest. So and, we call and, it skin to skin. And you weren't doing skin to skin 15, 20 years we ago. We were not. Wow. We were not. Baby got wrapped up, swaddled. That's right. And you could see their little face mm -hmm. and that's it. How, how did the change come about? With a lot of education, uh, actually about 15 years ago, um, there was a nurse that started what she called kangaroo care. And I think it's kind of um, 
run along since then. So we know that the baby on mom's chest, the baby feels secure, the baby's heart rate will drop if, if the heart rate is, is too fast. Um, if they're cold, the mother's gonna warm them up. It, it's just, it's perfect um, between the two of them. So from a uh, hospital standpoint, I mean, we're just talking about to take the baby, dry the baby off and plop Mm -hmm. uh, from the moment they're born. Mother's got to love it, you would think. Mm -hmm. uh, must might be in some discomfort otherwise, but. Well, they knew about it ahead of time. Part, part of this whole improvement is at every prenatal visit, um, the nurse midwives, the OB doctors are talking about all the benefits of breastfeeding and what to expect. So it's, it's not a shock. And a lot of our moms take classes too. And uh, I think they really enjoy it. And the, the baby immediately goes looking for something to eat. It, it's not always immediately, but those first, one of the things when you wrap them and put them away is we miss those first cues that baby gives to mom. And mom also misses those uh, things she needs to hear and feel her baby, helps her start not only be safer right after delivery, mm -hmm. less chance of bleeding, but it also starts letting her body know that her baby's here. Um, and so we were missing a lot of those cues from baby. We were missing that opportunity for mom to hold and feel baby and to get her hormones in her brain that will tell her to breastfeed. And so, you know, not all babies uh, can do this, but a majority of them can, and we can put them right on. And then we just watch them and see when they're showing us signs that they're ready for that first feeding. Let me uh, remind our viewers, if you have a question about uh, breastfeeding, the movement towards more uh, breastfeeding as opposed to bottle feeding, you can give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. You can also email your questions. The email address is livequestions at mpt.org. So typically, how long do you want somebody to continue breastfeeding the, the baby? Is there a certain number of months? When are you supposed to wean these days? The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that every baby receive breast milk for a year. But World Health, which is a bigger body, would like every baby to receive breast milk for two years. Um, it's a living fluid. And uh, forgot before, we call it the first vaccination. Mm -hmm. The first time the babies feed, it's their first vaccination. Um, they get all the immunities from mom in that first feeding. You, you mentioned, one of you mentioned that modern society isn't totally in sync with this. If you're going back into the, the workforce, uh, any improvements in, in the, you know, the systems for, for pumping, storing, and all that? Uh, we saw some big improvement come with the Affordable Care Act, put a lot of uh, measures in place to help support breast pumps uh, for moms so that when moms were gonna be going back to work, uh, some lactation support, mm -hmm. lactation consultation, and a lot of those have stayed in place and that has helped a lot. There's also, uh, Maryland has uh, regulations, so do a lot of states uh, about supporting women, giving them breaks uh, to breastfeed. And so it doesn't apply to all employees and some women that are working uh, certain jobs might not benefit from those, but there's definitely a lot more now than there used to be to support women. As a society, how, how do we feel about it? Do, do, does society feel about this the way that, that you would like? I think there's a lot of discomfort with the act of breastfeeding and I think it's probably from lack of knowledge and we have grown up in a society that is a bottle feeding society. So we, we, we try haven't to make seen everything prepackaged, branded. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So people know that that's what the norm is for them and they are uncomfortable around mothers that are breastfeeding sometimes. Right, and we, we've seen that there was some picture going around on Instagram today of a celebrity who was, was breastfeeding. So there was the issue with the exposed, partially exposed breast, which makes some mm -hmm. people uncomfortable, but she was also holding a glass of wine, which is something I wanted yes. to ask you about. If, if you're a breastfeeding mother, do you have to be more careful about what you eat and drink and smoke perhaps uh, than otherwise? De definitely. Um, if you read that article, they quoted American Academy of Pediatrics and they said that they would like you 
to not drink that glass of wine, of wine one to two hours before feeding the baby. So, so feed, feed the baby, <laughs> then have the glass <laughs> exactly, of wine. Exactly, exactly. Um, um, and I, I like to say to women that they often, there's a lot of things they can't, they can have very full diets. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, one glass of wine is different than some other things that we could put mm -hmm. in. So it's all about making sure that you're in communication with lactation experts or with your pediatricians to know what's safe. Women don't have to have perfect diets. They don't have to be in perfect shape. Uh, yes, we need to keep drugs and certain substances have to be out of the milk because those could be dangerous, uh, including ones that sometimes we prescribe. We have to be careful to make sure uh, we know a mom's lactation status. But I like to remind women that they, you know, this doesn't have to change their lives as much as they might think to be able to successfully and safely breastfeed their babies. The, the other point worth making in, in support of breastfeeding is on the other end of the digestive system that, that uh, yes. breast milk digests almost perfectly. I mean, it's mm -hmm. designed, the body, both uh, systems yes. are, are designed for that. And when you do change to formula or certainly solid food, uh, put this simply, the diapers get a lot smellier. Yes, they do. <laughs> And there's a lot of things talking about that end, about our gut flora that we've learned. And so that's one of the things we've known breast milk is the best food, but we're still learning about why. And one of these things that has emerged is from breast milk, a uh, baby gets about a third of its gut flora. And we're understanding that now has impact on risk of getting diabetes, obesity, even hypertension. And so what we call the microbiome of the gut is seeded uh, in great part by breast milk in a way that it's not with formula. So that end of the gut is also <laughs> stinky diapers and... <laughs> Let's grab a phone call, uh, Prince William County. This is Holly. Holly, thanks for the call, go ahead. Hi, I have a question for the ladies. Um, mm -hmm. I'm interested when a child or a newborn is um, not taking breast milk properly, like they get very bloated, very gassy, very uh, stinky, smelly diapers, possibly slight hives. Does this mean that the child is allergic to breast milk or lactose? Is this an early sign or signal of a lactose intolerance in the child? And should I be maybe moving to like a soy alternative? Holly, thanks for the phone call. How often do you see that? Um, pretty, pretty, I can't think, maybe five, ten percent of moms may experience something like this. And a good recommendation is to go back to your pediatrician mm -hmm and uh, possibly even see a Peds GI doctor, because it may not be lactose, mm -hmm. it might be dairy products, um, but the pediatric doctors will help you figure out what it is. But definitely not going to a soy formula. Um, that's just as allergic as, as dairy. What, what are the top issues that a lactation consultant sees? Um, I mean, you must see the same. It'd be a, it must be a lot of new mothers, I'm guessing. Yes, yeah. First time mothers. First time mothers, uh, inability to latch, um, sore nipples, or babies are biting um, <laughs> when they get a little bit older. Um, and women fear that they're not producing enough milk to feed their baby. Because That's it's perfectly fear. obvious when the bottle's empty. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So we developed a really beautiful way of showing how small the baby's stomach is on day one, day three, and day seven. And we show those to the moms to reinforce that they do have enough milk. Jennifer, what happens when, when a child needs to go to the, the NICU? I mean, and, and, or maybe it's a premature birth, or those things impediments to breastfeeding? Well, they can be impediments to direct breastfeeding if a baby's needing to be uh, helped to breathe and they're might and being separated, but it's actually these uh, babies who are premature and who are going to the NICU who are having cardiac, we were talking about cardiac surgeries earlier for complex heart diseases, those are the ones that need this the most. And uh, doctor teams all over the world and all over the country are realizing how important breast milk is to the well-being of these babies. So it's now becoming uh, one of our staunchest advocates are some of these pediatricians and specialists because they need that breast milk to help make those babies better. And the best place to get that is from the moms themselves. There's banks and other things, but 
the ideal source is the mom and then as quickly as possible getting them together as well and hopefully eventually breastfeeding directly but the milk is essential for these babies. Mm -hmm. I guess there's a feeling in society that we can improve upon anything. We have the, the science, we have the, the technology to do it. And maybe that was part of the, the big movement away from, from breastfeeding, but, but now maybe we know more. And there's the move towards natural foods of, of all kinds. Does that help? I believe so, it, but it's just the perfect food for human babies. There, there's no argument at all. It, it, it's just the right food. I laugh because every time I read a new article about breast milk, I realize it, it is breast milk that makes me realize that how much we think we know, but how really little we know about how our systems work, all our systems work in sync with each other. And so I think that's part of the big push is as we're realizing more about the immune system, about um, microbes, about all these things that we're learning about breast milk, um, that's helping reintroduce it, I guess, getting back to basics. Jennifer Fahey and uh, Cheryl Holden, both University of Maryland Medical, thanks for spending time with us. Thank, Thank you. you. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.